Born in 1967 in Georgia, USA, Julia Fiona Roberts' father was a drama teacher and her mum was a real estate agent, but they divorced when she was only four years old. Sadly, her father Walter passed away from cancer when she was just nine. The youngest of three children, animal lover Julia decided early on that she wanted to become a vet and turned vegetarian. After graduating from high school, she changed her mind and studied journalism at university. But after observing her actor brother Eric, changed directions again, moving to New York to enrol in acting classes. She is now the highest paid actress in the world. So what inspired her to take up the profession? Um, you know, a real um, lack of skill to do anything else. Honestly, that's what it comes down to. It was either acting or um, being a dental hygienist because I come from a family with really good teeth and I felt I should give back, you know. Um, but here I am. She made her film debut in Blood Red opposite her brother Eric, but the role wasn't exactly big with only two words. Next, it was an appearance on Sesame Street opposite Elmo, but it wasn't long before she landed her first real gig, a hipster band member in the rock musical Satisfaction. That role led to her first significant supporting role as the feisty pizza parlor waitress in Mystic Pizza. While not a star-making film, it gave her the credentials to land the part of Shelby in 1989's Steel Magnolias. The film showcased her range and appeal, and Julia received her first Oscar nomination and won the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress, leaving the world interested in her next move. Well, I'm the pretty woman, and <laughs> um, now I play, a, I play a prostitute that he is, is lost one night in Hollywood and stops and asks me for directions, and after uh, a couple moments, I kind of just jump into his car, and... Uh, we basically strike a deal where I will spend the week that he's in Los Angeles on business with him for $3,000. And it's kind of what happens over the course of that week. And what a success it was. Released in 1990, Pretty Woman catapulted her to A-list superstar status. Still today, Julia and Richard Gere are voted one of the greatest screen couples of all time. But Julia was in fact lucky to score the role after the first two choices, Molly Ringwald and Meg Ryan, turned down the part. The film has a special place in her heart as it changed her life and earned her a second Oscar nomination, this time for Best Actress. Every, every thought I have of Pretty Woman, of the making of Pretty Woman, of, of that whole kind of um, experience I had is, is so fond and so close to me and, and so great. And, uh, actually quite fresh in my mind. I, I can remember jokes and funny things and, and uh, it was probably one of the more extraordinary times of my life just making that movie. Now in High Demand, Julia took on a wide range of roles with differing levels of success. She played a battered wife in the thriller Sleeping with the Enemy, received lukewarm reviews playing Tinkerbell in Spielberg's Hook, but bounced back playing a nurse in the drama Dying Young. Then, apart from a cameo role in The Player, Julia took two years off, leaving the industry asking what happened to Julia Roberts. Rumours circulated that her career was over and that Hollywood needed a new Julia Roberts. But in 1993, she returned to co-star with Denzel Washington in the impressive The Pelican Brief, reaffirming her status as a dramatic actress. Over the next few years, her career nosedived again with a number of critical and commercial film failures. But she then silenced the critics again by showing off her comedic skills, most notably in 1997's My Best Friend's Wedding, followed by one of my favourite films, 1999's Notting Hill with Hugh Grant and Runaway Bride, teaming up again with Richard Gere. She was now the reigning queen of romantic comedies. Yes, Julia was back, but had she ever really gone? It didn't to me. It seems to, to other people, but to me, you know... I work a lot, so comeback sort of sounds like I've been napping, which clearly I haven't been. In 2001, Julia became the first actress to join the $20 million club, making her the highest paid actress in Hollywood for her role as the sassy, strong legal secretary Erin Brockovich. Her outstanding performance won her the Golden Globe, SAG and most notably the Best Actress Oscar. Overcome, she giggled her way through an epic three-minute acceptance speech, even forgetting to thank the real Erin who was sitting in the audience. However, she did shed a tear. Only out of one eye. I was only halfway touched, I guess, 
or something. And I'm still doing it. It's, I still keep doing it. But it's a, just really um, sort of confirms what you hope to be true, which is that someone is thankful that you have this job. And it makes it really nice. Named one of People magazine's 50 most beautiful people in the world a record 10 times, she's proved very popular with the opposite sex. Attracted to actors, she's been engaged to Keith Sutherland, married to country singer La Lovett for 21 months. She briefly dated Matthew Perry and Daniel Day-Lewis. For a time, she lived with Liam Neeson and dated Benjamin Bratt for over three years. But it was on the set of The Mexican in 2001 that she fell head over heels for cameraman Danny Moda. She ended her relationship with Bratt, Danny divorced his wife, and the pair married and now have three children. Also in 2001, Julia starred in the ultra-cool Ocean's Eleven alongside Hollywood heavyweights George what? Clooney, Brad Pitt what? and Matt Damon. Director Steven Soderbergh had directed Julia's performance in Erin Brockovich, so obviously she was a big fan of his work. Secure in her working relationship with the director, Julia wasn't as sure about her cheeky co-stars, who before filming started, reportedly sent her a card that read, we heard you get 20 per film, and included a $20 note, a joke on her rumored $20 million paycheck. I was actually a little bit intimidated because I thought they have this great rapport and they're boys and it's all boys and I'm just gonna come in and, and uh, Stephen had a rehearsal with me and George uh, long before the movie started and it completely put me at ease because I realized that there was just a rhythm between the three of us that would I wouldn't feel like the outsider when it was the three of us on the set so that worked out pretty well. Julia's charisma with her leading men is one of her many talents but how did she work with the incredibly smooth George Clooney? It's just really hard acting with George because it's, you know, I'm supposed to be steely and serious and I was, you know, laughing like a 12-year-old and it was, um, yeah, I think Stephen was, getting, was starting to wonder why did I bring these two people to the table together because, we, you know, we have very similar personality. We're like brother and sister, a very similar kind of rhythm and silliness and around 3 o'clock in the morning one night it really, we were off to the races and it was kind of a tiny miracle that we got through the scene. Set on starring in the Ocean sequel, she cleverly disguised her pregnancy when appearing in 2004's Ocean's 12. Now preferring to focus on her family, she chose to take on smaller supporting roles. She appeared in the more serious Charlie Wilson's War with Tom Hanks, and then back to leading alongside one of her biggest fans and fellow actor Clive Owen in Duplicity. She, for me, there's nobody better at playing this kind of dialogue and you know, I've not only had a fantastic time, but I also learned a lot working with her because, you know, I think um, there's a certain thing that she does that she's better than anyone else at. Still raking in the big bucks, for one of her latest films, Valentine's Day, she was paid a whopping $3 million for a six-minute appearance. So do the math, and that's $8,333 a second, roughly $500,000 a minute. That's insane. The film also stars her niece, Emma Roberts, who Julia once took to movie sets when she was little. My aunt's in the movie, but we don't have scenes together, and uh, we didn't even really talk about it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when I see her, it's rare, because we're always out of town, like, on dif in different places, so I just hang out with her and the family, and, uh, yeah, it's not really about work, ever. It's hard to believe it's been over 20 years since Julia took our breath away in Pretty Woman. So if the 1990 rising star could comment on the colossal career she has subsequently had, what would she say? Um, well, I wouldn't have believed it. I still barely do, truthfully. I'm so uh, fortunate, continually fortunate, that I keep coming upon these smart, interesting, creative people who pick me. It's just stupendous. With her unforgettable smile, Julia Roberts really has reached the pinnacle of her profession. Not only has she won the Best Actress Oscar, but she's been named the most bankable and highly paid actress in Hollywood history, proving she really is the Queen of Tinseltown. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love, broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.